Hey guys, Jules for What Culture here, and I want to talk to you today about Nia Jax. Now, from what I hear on the grapevine, she's not like most girls, but in their quest to turn her into something great, I do worry that the WWE has kind of made her the worst at everything. While that is interesting, it does beg the question, why is she getting another shot? I mean, in her showdown between her and Ronda Rousey, she was the weaker worker of the two, and Ronda has only wrestled two matches. Yet, she's still getting these types of opportunities, so surely she's doing something right, yes? Well, maybe not. It's because she's not really been painted in a positive light. Think back to the contract signing for Rousey versus Jax and how it swung from being sensible to, well, a Stephanie McMahon segment. After all, despite having her arm wrenched out previous to this segment, there's no one tougher than the boss's daughter, right? I mean, that explains why she took center stage and basically made both women look like absolute idiots. She sat literally playing devil's advocate sitting on the shoulders of each one, saying, oh, she said that you were stupid. Oh, she doesn't think that you're worthy of a challenge. And they both fell for it. It made both women look really stupid and easily manipulated, and it weakened their stock within the company. Now, this isn't so bad for Rousey, because at this time she was still green and she can take a few knocks on the up and up. But Nia was the champion, and she was being portrayed as an idiot. It's funny because Rousey is a rookie and therefore green, and yet in this segment, Nia also felt green as absolute f in fact, at Money in the Bank, Nia was a distant third. She was basically out-wrestled by Rousey, and then when Alexa Bliss cashed in, she received a pop that Nia had never even heard during her top billing. It's because she's been spoon-fed a career path that was similar to Braun Strowman, squashing jobbers in order to make her into a women's division powerhouse, but unlike Braun, who grew beyond his size and developed a personality, Nia has been lumbered by hers. This is not a sizist remark, nor the fact that she's a woman, but we do need to ask ourselves Ourselves this very important question. Aside from being related to The Rock, what are her positives? She debuted on NXT in 2015, couldn't master the Samoan drop finishing move they'd given her, nor the leg drop alternative. She'd had some pretty bad botches as well, including that running the ropes incident with Sasha Banks. And what did she really have to show for it? She had a decent lockup with Asuka and a pretty okay match which Bailey carried her in. And, and that was it. Yet that was enough, according to the WWE, to take her from NXT and plop her at a top spot on Raw. It doesn't seem like she's been given much of a chance to grow now, does it? But here's the thing, she was fast-tracked from the off, and her championship climb was even more assisted. Yet this isn't the worst thing. No, the worst thing is the character that's been created this year. Now, when Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss began feuding earlier this year, heads were turning for the right reasons. The story they were telling was really interesting, and I, along with many in the office, couldn't wait to see where it was going. It was about body shaming, it was about bullying, it was about standing up for yourself. But the more this got attention, the less confidence the WWE had in this, and basically turned Nia's promos into tightly scripted, buzzword fueled drawls that were delivered, thanks in her part, with all the passion of a coma patient. Fans began to sour on the movement the more that they could see that she was completely dead behind the eyes, and she just delivered all of her promos with all the tonal range of a flatlining heart monitor. It was actually quite sad, and the worst thing was that when she was touting lines like be a star and believe in yourself, Itself, it just felt incredibly disingenuous and just like plugs for the WWE charity. Now, Be A Star is one of the best things the WWE has ever done. It helps thousands of people all around the world. Yet that's why it was so problematic when Nia Jax took to the mic and said, bullies always get their asses kicked. It is a non-violence organization, tries to use everything bar confrontation to solve problems, and yet here she was saying that. And then, worst of all, they turned her into a bully herself. It is here that you can see that the WWE doesn't give a shit about her. The WWE rushed this storyline to a close so they could basically set it up again with Nia as the bully and Ronza as the underdog. Now this is a huge issue because not only does it just scream that the WWE thinks that we have the attention span of fruit flies, but it basically is saying to Nia, you don't matter, you're just another body. You're just another large person who we can chuck out and use to do squash matches. And now you're just gonna fulfill your role as bully because our contract to say that we've mentioned be a star X number of times is fulfilled. She's a walking propaganda piece. There's no depth to it. If the WWE were being honest about Nia Jax, they'd probably be taken to a 
f***ing tribunal. Her size hasn't unlocked an emotional intensity that you need to become a wrestling machine. Her nepotistic rub hasn't given her an ounce of charisma and all they do for her now is cart her in front of affiliates, stockholders, sponsors as an example of diversity. And that is shallow as f***. If the WWE were being honest, they'd realize that Nia Jax is just a meal ticket. And there we go, those are my thoughts on Nia Jax and her current state in the WWE. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.